Depression is a complicated and devastating illness, but there is hope. One form of treatment, antidepressants, helps millions of people. But as common as they are, not a lot is known about them. So how do they work? Hey guys, Julia here for D News. According to the CDC, about 10% of Americans over the age of 12 now take antidepressants. They're one of the most commonly prescribed medications in the US. And despite some negative hype of recent years, they are incredibly effective against some of the most stubborn forms of depression. For as common as they are, there's plenty of myths about them. So how do antidepressants actually work? Thanks to Louis Hong for asking us this question. Well, to understand how these drugs work, we have to first look at the disease. Depression is often called a chemical imbalance in the brain, but that's a very simple explanation. According to the American Psychiatric Association, it's a common and serious medical illness that negatively affects how you feel, the way you think, and how you act. Sometimes stressful life events like a major move or a death of a loved one can trigger this disorder, but others are genetically predisposed. According to one study published in the journal Science, researchers found that those with a different version of the 5-HTT gene experienced more depressive symptoms. The gene specifically plays a role in serotonin regulation, which is just one of the reasons that scientists believe depression is caused by a lack of serotonin and other neurotransmitters in the brain, and informs the drugs they design. Your brain is made up of billions and billions of neurons, the nerve cells, and the way those nerve cells are wired up depends on a billion different factors like genetics and upbringing. But nerve cells never actually touch. Instead, as information whizzes around your brain, an electrical signal passes across the gap between them. This gap is called the synapse. When your brain is active and signals transfer from one neuron to the next, chemicals are released at the synapse to transfer information from one neuron to the next. After a chemical is released, some of it gets reabsorbed back into one of the neurons. Sometimes too much of a certain chemical gets reabsorbed, leaving less of it floating around in the brain. The prevailing theory of depression posits that it's this excessive reuptake that causes the mood disorder. So many antidepressants work by blocking the reuptake of various neurotransmitters. Some of the most commonly prescribed medications block the reuptake of serotonin, mostly known for its feel-good effects. Other drugs block other neurotransmitters like norepinephrine and dopamine. No one is exactly sure why having more of these neurotransmitters like serotonin loose in the brain boosts your mood, but it does. But not right away. Most antidepressants take a few weeks, three to six, to fully kick in. But that's not the whole story. There's some evidence that antidepressants work because they help the process of neurogenesis, which is the growth of new brain cells. Basically, there's this area of your brain called the hippocampus, which is responsible for things like memory, learning, and emotion. When you're stressed or depressed, your brain releases stress hormones called glucocorticoids, and they can actually stop the growth of new brain cells and even kill them. And for some reason, these stress hormones really change the hippocampus. In fact, studies like one published in the Journal of Neuroscience found that the brains of people with depression tend to have smaller hippocampi. So some researchers think it's this shrinking of the hippocampus that causes depression. So there's some evidence, like one study published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, that show that antidepressants might work by blocking those stress-causing hormones. And by blocking these stress hormones, it can stop the death of brain cells in the hippocampus. More exciting, perhaps, is that multiple studies, like one published in the journal Molecular Psychiatry, find that in animal models, SSRIs and other antidepressants actually increase neurogenesis or the growth of new neurons in the hippocampus. And coincidentally or not, it takes about three to six weeks for new cells to mature, about the same time it takes for SSRIs to kick in. So maybe that's how they work? Well, more research is needed. Still, I want to make clear that for all we know or don't know about antidepressants, there's no shame in taking them. Depression is a biological illness just like any other. And just like those with diabetes that have to take insulin to stay healthy, some people with depression are helped by antidepressants. If you want to help fight the stigma of mental illness and medication, go check out the hashtag MedicatedAndMighty on Twitter. Nearly one in five Americans suffer from some kind of mental illness. While common, there's so much shame and stigma associated with them, mostly due to misinformation. To learn the truth about another condition, check out this video on bipolar disorder. While researchers aren't sure what causes it, the risk factors for bipolar include genetics and environment, things like stress, substance abuse, and even lack of sleep. But really, it can affect anybody. Thanks again to Lewis Hong for asking us this question. If you have a question you want us to answer, let us know down in the comments below. Don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons so you don't miss a single episode of D News.